Most people know about the B-17 Flying Fortress and the numerous missions flown by this plane during the Second World War. The other famous heavy bomber of the war was the B-29 Super Fortress, which is perhaps best known as the aircraft which dropped the atomic bombs on Japan. But there's also another large plane which is often completely forgotten about. This aircraft would take part in the last air battle of the whole war. In today's video, we look at the B-32 Dominator, America's forgotten bomber of World War II. If you enjoy this video and want to see more, hit that subscribe button. It's free and really helps the channel reach more history lovers like you. As early as 1940, even before the events in Pearl Harbor, the United States created a program for the creation of long-range heavy bombers. For the contract, manufacturers Boeing and Consolidated went head-to-head -head with their versions. The Boeing B-29 Superfortress showed a lot of early promise and therefore the Consolidated's B-32 Dominator was treated more as a backup plan should the Superfortress fail to meet expectations. The initial design of the B-32 would be vastly different from the final product. The prototype had a twin tail design similar to that of a B-24. It featured an incredibly strange and complex defensive system. This consisted of twin 50 cal machine guns mounted in remote control gun spheres. One in the nose, one in the tail, two on the belly and two on the top. Finally, the most bizarre of all were remote control machine guns mounted in the engine housings facing rearwards. The aircraft was also pressurised, allowing for high altitude bombing. Issues began to arise with the manufacturing process, and the project fell well behind schedule as the B-29 seemed to streak ahead. The pressurisation system was prone to failure, and after several trials and attempts to rectify it, the whole prototype was completely changed. The final design of the B-32 would see the twin tail replaced with one huge tail, about 20 feet or 6 metres in height. The pressurisation system was scrapped, which meant the Dominator would now function as a low to medium altitude bomber. The complicated remote control system was also thrown out, along with the rear-facing engine machine guns. More conventional manned guns were now used. The aircraft used the same four Cyclone engines as the B-29, which allowed for a top speed of 360 miles or 575 kilometres an hour. The large fuselage allowed for 20,000 pounds or 9,000 kilograms of bombs to be dropped out to the B-32's maximum range of 3,800 miles or 6,000 kilometres. Finally, a crew of 10 men would see the aircraft into the war. By the time the B-32 was ready for delivery, the B-29 was already making its name in combat, flying missions over China and the Pacific. Despite the Dominator having some advantages over the Super Fortress, including around 20% more range and reversible pitch propellers to minimise drag, the Air Force pressed on with the use of the B-29. In the end, only one unit would fly the Dominators, and that was the 386th Bombardment Squadron. They conducted a series of missions in the Philippines and modern-day Taiwan, which included bombing a sugar mill and an alcohol plant. By August 1945, the squadron was deployed to Okinawa and assigned to fly photo reconnaissance missions over Japan. On the 15th of August, Emperor Hirohito indicated his intention to surrender to the Allies and ordered Japanese armed forces to stop resisting. On the 17th of August, while the 386th flew over Japan, they were intercepted by Japanese fighter aircraft who began shooting at them. The B-32s shot back and no losses were taken by either side during this engagement. To determine if this was a one-off, the next day on the 18th of August, two B-32s flew over Japan, 
At 2pm that day, the Dominators were strafed by at least 14 Japanese A6M0s. One of the B-32s, nicknamed the Hobo Queen 2, was initially hit through the plexiglass of the top turret, resulting in the gunner being wounded. A second run by the Zero resulted in the fuselage being penetrated, and one of two aerial photographers being hit. His fellow photographer, named Sergeant Anthony Marchioni, was providing him assistance when he too was struck with cannon fire. Unfortunately for him, he was struck in the chest, and despite help from crew members, he died on board. Marchioni had the unfortunate distinction of being the last US airman to die during the war. Two weeks later, on the 2nd of September 1945, the Japanese officially surrendered, and World War II was over. Manufacturing for the Dominator was stopped, and as a result of more advanced technology on the horizon, it ultimately subsided into the history books. Mostly seen as a failed project, the B-32 is more often than not forgotten about, due to the B-29 Superfortress having a vastly more active combat role during the war. However, despite the B-32's drawbacks, it was still a necessary step in military aviation, and hopefully one that more people can now remember. Had you heard of the B-32 Dominator prior to this video? What did you think about it? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to expand your knowledge and join the growing Premier History community.